As we walk back in time with Cinderella stories, she kicks off her shoes. There's no glass slipper in these stories. The stories we'll hear in this lecture can be traced back thousands of years, and they center on a character who is neither all good nor all evil, but wickedly powerful. In Russian folklore, there is a story that's closely related to both Cinderella and Hansel and Gretel. See if you can pick out the motifs of both of these stories and tale types in this story, Baba Yaga. Once upon a time, there was a man, and the man had a daughter. And he loved his daughter, but even though he loved his daughter, he was very sad because his wife had died many years before, and he was lonely. But after a while, the man, he fell in love with another woman, and he fell in love with her hair. He fell in love with her face, and he had made a bad, bad choice because this woman did not like the little girl. And of course, to the man's face, she was very nice. Oh, my babushka, you come here. You Oh, love, 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 love. But whenever the man had left, as soon as he shut the door, she would beat the girl. She would talk down to the girl. She would tell the girl to go away. Go, 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 go. Well, this went on for quite some time. Until one day, the man found that he had business to do out of town, and, and he said goodbye to the family. He said, oh, goodbye, my daughter, my daughter. I love you so much. Oh, goodbye, my wife. My Oh, look at your hair. Oh. <laughs> oh, bye-bye. And he left, went out, and shut the door. And as soon as he shut the door, the stepmother turned around and said, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you girl, you come here. And the girl, she walked over, said, I want you to go over to your auntie's house, my sister. You go over to your auntie's house and you go and get a shirt. You need a fresh shirt. You, you go and get a shirt. Well, the girl, she was terrified because she knew that, that this woman's sister was the Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga, the bony legged, who lived out in the woods and liked to eat little girls. Oh, no, no, I, please do not send me to, to the Baba Yaga's house. You go, you go and get a shirt. <laughs> and she sent the girl out the door and watched her as the girl started walking out towards the woods. Well, the girl, she was walking and watched the stepmother at the door and bye-bye. She shut the door. I'll never see her again. <laughs> and as soon as that stepmother had shut the door, the girl who was walking in the direction of Baba Yaga's house well, she turned around and headed exactly the opposite direction to her own auntie's house. Oh, auntie, auntie, my, 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 my stepmother, she wants to send me to the Baba Yaga's house, and, and the Baba Yaga, she will eat me. Oh, no, 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 do not worry. Do not worry. I will tell you how you can survive. Here, when you go to the Baba Yaga's house, you will find a cat. The cat will try to scratch at you, but... You give the cat a piece of ham, and she gave the girl a piece of ham. You take the ham. She said, when you go to the Baba Yaga's hut, the Baba Yaga has a dog. You will find a dog there. The dog will try to rip you to shreds, but you give the dog a fresh piece of bread. And she gave her a fresh piece of bread. You'll see what happens. When you go to the Baba Yaga's hut, you will find there, there is a gate the gate will try to bar your path, but you take this vial, and she gave her a vial of oil. She said, you take that oil and you pour it on the hinges, you see what happens when you go to the Baba Yaga's hut. You will find a birch tree, the birch tree, the, the branches will try to lash at your eyes, but you take this, and she gave the girl a ribbon. She said, you tie that around the base of the tree, you see what happens. Now you go, and the girl... She left her own auntie's house, and she went walking out into the woods towards the Baba Yaga's hut. And as she walked deeper and deeper into those woods, it got dark. Finally, she came out to where there was a, a clearing in the deepest part of the woods. And as she walked out, she saw that the roots of those trees looked as if they were bubbling up out from underneath the surface of the ground. And then as she walked Further into that clearing, she saw that some of those roots were starting to twitch. 
and move. And she realized that that three of those roots that were twitching weren't actually roots, but they were the, the, the feet of a chicken. And she saw, attached to the feet of that chicken, was the feathery, stalky leg of a chicken. And resting on top of that feathery, stalky leg of a chicken was the hut of the Baba Yaga. And she saw there was a, a window in that hut, way up high, and, and she saw, through that window, she saw there was a fire glowing from inside that hut, and from the glow of that fire, she saw the bony legs stretched out all the way across, almost from one end of the hut to the other, the bony legs of the Baba Yaga. Well, she, she walked through that clearing, plucked up her courage, and she started to climb up to that hut. Auntie, your, your sister has sent me for a shirt to, to get from you. Ah! And the Baba Yaga started to sniff. Ah! You come in. You come, come. You, come, you need a shirt. <laughs> well, you'll need some cloth. So you come over here by the fire. You sit by the fire. Here. And she got her a loom. Here, you weave. You weave by the fire. You make yourself some cloth for a shirt. You sit there. And she walked over to the edge of that room in her hut. And she called over to her maid. And she said, you, that girl, she is stinky. I want you to give her a bath because I want to eat her. <laughs> but she's too stinky now. You need to bathe her first. So you go boil some water. You boil the water and you give her a bath and the dye will come back and eat her. You keep weaving, she called out to the girl. Bye-bye. You make her clean. I'll be back. <laughs> and she shut the door with the girl. She sat there by the fire. She knew that the Baba Yaga was not meaning anything good for her. And, and she saw the, the maid who was coming over with logs. She was putting the logs on the fire to make, make the fire hotter so she could boil up the water to clean her off. So she go, oh, no, no, do not, do not put more logs onto the fire. No, no, please, no. And she tried to think of something she could do to distract that maid. And she, she had a kerchief on. So she untied her kerchief. Everybody pretend like you're untying that kerchief. She took it off. She, here, here, here is a present. Here is a gift. And the girl, she took that kerchief as if it were the finest thing she had ever seen. Ooh. <laughs> and she took that kerchief. She put it on. Everybody put it on. And she tied it around her. And she went over to the mirror. Oh, don't I look pretty? <laughs> look at me. And she started preening herself in the mirror. Well, what the girl was distracted. Oh, oh the... The young girl, she, she looked around. She was trying to find a way out. She didn't want to go out the same way that the Baba Yaga had come in. The, the Baba Yaga might be waiting right there by the door. And so she looked around. But as she was looking, she saw the two gleaming eyes of something off in the corner. And as it came closer, she saw that they were the gleaming eyes of a cat. And as that cat came closer, its claws were bared, and, and she could see it was about to scratch at her. But she remembered. She remembered what her auntie had given her. And so she pulled out a piece of ham. And she threw it to the cat. Everybody, throw your, throw your ham at the cat. Oh, and the cat. <laughs> she ate up all of that ham. Mm. <laughs> Dearie, what do you want? Oh, I must find a way out of the, this hot, the, this hot, I, I must find a way out and away from the Baba Yaga. Oh, girly, don't you know, I'm a cat. <laughs> Cats always land on their feet. <laughs> Look that away. And the cat pointed with its tail over to a spot in the corner of that room. The girl hadn't noticed before, but there was a, a hole in the bottom of that hut, just the right size for her to slip through. And the cat called out to her, don't go yet, dearie. And the cat gave her two gifts. She gave the girl a piece of white cloth, and she gave the girl a comb. Now, <laughs> head on that away. <laughs> and the girl, she slipped out and jumped out of that hole through that hole, down hit the ground, and she started to run. Everybody run. She ran and she ran until she heard, arr, 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 and she heard the sound of some dogs. Oh, and the dogs, they, they were, they were, 
mom. They were snarling. They were threatening to rip her to shreds. But she remembered. She remembered what her auntie had given her. She reached in her pocket and she pulled out a piece of bread. bread. And she threw that at the dogs. Everybody threw their fresh bread at the dogs. And the dogs. Get on, girl. And on she ran. Ready to run. She ran until she came to a gate. And the gate. Oh, those hinges, they were they were so rusty, she couldn't even budge, oh, not even an inch, but she, she remembered what her auntie had given her, and she pulled out the vial of oil, oil. yes, and she took that oil, and she whoop, whoop, dripped it onto the hinges, but it dripped it on, oh, and that, that gate, it began to, ah, it swung free as if it had not moved in quite some time. And it sighed as it opened. <gasps> Go on through. And on she ran. She ran, she ran. She could see. She, she was almost to the edge of the forest, but she could see. Oh, there was a birch tree. There was a birch tree there. And, and the, the, the top branches were starting to wave, but almost as if not into the wind. It, it was as if the birch tree were moving on its own, and those branches were starting to, to lash at her eyes. But she remembered what her auntie had told her and given her. And she pulled out. Remember? The ribbon. She pulled out that ribbon and she tied that ribbon around the base of the birch tree. But I tie the ribbon around the base of the birch tree. And the birch tree, oh, <laughs> look at my waist. I am so pretty. <laughs> the way out is oh, that away. <laughs> and she pointed with her branches in the direction of the girl's home and she ran. But right at that time, back in the clearing of the forest, the Baba Yaga was coming back into the hut. She opened the door. Ah, oh, my girl! <laughs> what are you doing with your shirt? Oh, and she looked over. She saw not only that the girl was gone, but the cat had picked up all of the, the yarn and, and was there at weaving by the fire. Only, what does a cat like to do with yarn? It doesn't weave, right? It, what does it do with yarn? Play with it. <laughs> and the cat was a tangled mess. You, you, oh, and you. She saw her, ma her maid, and the maid was still, oh, look, aren't I pretty? <laughs> she was still, but why did you not stop the girl? Oh, you have never so much as given me an old shirt. <laughs> she gave me a kerchief. Don't I look nice? <laughs> you, cat. You, why did you not scratch at her? Oh, dearie, <laughs> you've never so much as given me an old bone. She gave me a piece of fresh ham, <laughs> but she did go that away, and she pointed with that tail over to the direction of the hole. Well, the Baba Yaga, she hopped down, and she went over and got a special device that she used to clamber through the forest. She got a mortar and pestle. Now, how many of you know what a mortar and pestle is? Have you ever heard of this? What is it? Uh, to grind stuff. Yes, yes, you use it. In olden days, they used it to, and even today, you can use it to grind up your herbs. It's, it's a little, um, like a stone, sometimes there's stone vessel with a stone stick, and you use it to grind, a bit of grind. Only this one wasn't it's the kind that could fit in your hand. This one was you. And she hopped inside her mortar. And she got that pestle in one hand and she started to grind her way. Everybody pick up your pestle. She started to grind her way down through following the girl. But she took in her other hand, she took a broom. Everybody take the broom. And she swept away the tracks behind her. She ground her way over until she came to you. <laughs> the dogs. Dogs, dogs. Why did you not rip her to shreds? Oh, <laughs> you've never so much as, as given us a, an old crusty piece of bread. She gave us fresh bread. <laughs> but she did go that away. And they pointed with their paws. And she picked up that pestle. Everybody pick up your pestle. Picked up her broom. And on she ground through the forest, sweeping up the tracks behind her until she came to that gate. And she'd ask the guy, why, why did you not stop that girl? Oh, you never so much as poured water onto my hinges. The girl gave me <gasps> oil, but she did go <gasps> that away. And the Baba Yaga, what did she do? She grabbed her pestle. She grabbed her 
broom, and she ground her way through the forest until she came to what? The birch tree. Oh, and that birch tree, it was swaying happily, dancing on its own tune. Why, why did you not stop the girl? Oh, you've never so much as put a thread around me. Oh, but she put a nice ribbon. <laughs> Don't I look pretty? <laughs> but she did go that away. <laughs> and she pointed with her branches in the direction that the girl had gone. And so the Baba Yaga, she grabbed her. Pestle. <laughs> she grabbed her broom and she started to grind her way in her mortar through that forest. And behind her, she used the broom to sweep up her tracks. And on she ground. And the girl, she was running. Better run. And she could hear the Baba Yaga behind her. She, oh, she's coming after me. But she remembered she had been given two more gifts by the cat. And she pulled out one of those gifts, the white piece of cloth. And she threw it behind her. Everybody threw it behind you. Threw it behind her, and she kept on running. And as that cloth floated down, that cloth floated down, and as soon as it hit the ground, it became a wide river. And the Baba Yaga, she ground her way as she got closer to that river. She couldn't get across that river. And so she ground her way back to her own home where she got her team of oxen. And she drove those oxen back over to that river and all of the oxen sucked that river dry. Everybody drink. Very good. You make very good oxen. She, they sucked that river dry. She picked up, she got in her mortar, picked up her pestle. Picked up her broom, and on she ground through the forest, sweeping up the tracks behind her with that broom. And the girl, running, she was running so fast, she, she could almost see the edge of the forest, but, but she remembered she had one more gift left from the cat. You remember what it was? What was it? Yes, the comb. She picked up that comb. Everybody pick up the comb. And she threw it behind her and she kept on running. And as that comb came down to the ground, those prongs of that comb, they stuck into the ground. And as soon as they stuck deeply into that fresh earth, they sprung up into brambles and vines, thick trees. And the Boba Yaga, she, she was in that mortar with that pestle and she, she ground her way. Everybody try and grind her way through that forest. Urgh. And she couldn't get through all of those brambles. She took her teeth, her sharp, pointy teeth, and she tried to, to her, her, claw her way through there. Everybody trying to eat that. Do you like to eat wood? Blah. No, but she couldn't get through, and the girl kept on running. And about that time, back at her home, her father was just coming in the door. Oh, what the good trip. <laughs> oh, my wife, my wife. Oh, but where is my daughter? Where, where, where is my daughter? Oh, your daughter. <laughs> she went out for a shirt and I do not know where. Right about that time, the door opened and there in walked the girl, looking tired, but very much alive. The father, he was glad to, oh, my daughter, oh, <laughs> come here. Where have you been? You look so, so tired and sweaty. <laughs> and no one was more surprised to see her than the wife. Oh, my, my father, <laughs> I, I went out because my stepmother sent me out to the Baba Yaga's hut, the Baba Yaga, who likes to eat little girls. But I went out to the Baba Yaga's hut, and when I got there, there was a cat the cat, it tried to scratch me, but I gave the cat a piece of ham, and it let me go. Then I found some dogs. The dogs tried to rip me to shreds, but I gave the dogs a piece of bread, bread and they let me go. And then I came to a gate. The gate tried to bar my way to get back to you, but, but I gave that gate some drops of oil. oil, and the gate, it let me go. And, and then I came to a birch tree. The birch tree tried to lash at my eyes, but I gave that birch tree a... Yes, and it let me go. And I kept on running. The Baba Yaga, she was chasing after me, but I took a piece of white cloth. I threw it behind me. It became a river. But the Baba Yaga, she kept on coming. And then I took a, the last gift, a... Um, comb. Very good. I took a comb. And it became a, a wild forest of brambles. And as far as I know, the Baba Yaga is still trying to tear her way back through those brambles right now. And the father turned 
and looked at the woman he had married. And it was as if he were seeing her face and her hair for the very first time as they really were. And the father took the mother and took her out. And this is a family story, so I won't tell you what happened. (laughs) But I will tell you that while that may not have been the last time that the girl saw the Baba Yaga, it was the last time that the girl was ever bothered by the evil stepmother ever again. The end. Did you catch the familiar tale characteristics and motifs embedded in this story? The wicked stepmother and the sisters, the good auntie serving as a fairy godmother, But remember what we said about the stepmother characters. They're metaphors. We all know that stepmothers can be wonderful in real life. I have a wonderful step-parent. This is one of a number of tales about Baba Yaga in Russian folklore. And as you hear more stories that have this character in it, you realize she's not always this witchy cannibal. Sometimes she's benevolent in the stories. Sometimes she saves the little girl from being mistreated back in her own home. And to get some context for Baba Yaga, we need to hear another Cinderella story. The Russian version of Cinderella is the tale Vasilisa the Beautiful. And it follows most of the traditional story t- storyline, but with several twists. Vasilisa loved her mother, but her mother was dying. And on her deathbed, Vasilisa's mother gave Vasilisa a doll. She said, listen, Vasilisushka. Remember and heed my last words, I am dying. And together with my maternal blessing, I give you this doll. Always keep it with you and do not show it to anyone. If you get into trouble, give the doll food and ask its advice. When it has eaten, it will tell you what to do in your trouble. Mother then kissed her daughter and died. And Vasilisa, who was the most beautiful girl in the village, she had a rough time of it after that. Her stepmother beat her. Her stepsisters were jealous, but the girl fed the doll, and the doll did all her chores for her. So she has an easier life because of her mother's gift of the doll. Until one day, the stepmother gave the children chores to do. She told one sister to make lace, the second to knit and Vasilisa had to spin. Then the stepmother put all the lights out in the room except for one little candle, which was all they had to see by, and then she left. After a time, the candle began to smoke, and instead of fixing the wick, one of the stepsisters cut the wick and extinguished the flame. Vasilisa couldn't see to do her work, and each of the sisters said, Oh, what will we do now? (laughs) Who will go to the Baba Yaga to get some light? (laughs) One sister said, The pins on my lace give me light, I shall not go. And the other said, My knitting needles give me light, so I shall not go. And together they both told Vasilisa, You must go to the Baba Yaga for light. (laughs) And the sisters pushed Vasilisa out into the woods. Well, she took her doll with her, and the doll reassured her as she walked trembling through the dark woods. And suddenly, a horseman galloped past her. His face was white. His clothes were white. His horse was white. His horse's trappings were white. And as he rode past her, daybreak, dawn, on the woods, she walked on. And a second horseman galloped past. He was all red, dressed in red. His horse was red, and the sun began to rise. Vasilisa walked on and on until she saw Baba Yaga's hut. And it was terrifying. As the story goes, the fence around the hut was made of human bones. And on the spikes were human skulls with staring eyes. 
The doors had human legs for doorpost and human hands for bolts, and a mouth with sharp teeth in place of a lock. Suddenly, a horseman, all black, dressed in black, riding a black horse, whooshed past. He galloped right up to Baba Yaga's bone door and vanished. The darkness fell on the woods. And as that darkness descended like a blanket, a light started to glow from the inside of the skulls, casting a gleam through the skull eyes and making the clearing where Baba Yaga's hut was bright as day. In through the woods with a crash and a crackle came Baba Yaga herself, grinding her way through the forest with her pestle and her broom. Fie, fie, I smell a Russian smell. Who is here? Vasilisa said, it, it is I, grandmother. My, my stepsister sent me to get some light. Baba Yaga said, I know your stepsisters. Very well. But before I give you the light, you must live with me and work for me. If not, I will eat you up. Baba Yaga cried out, strong bolts, unlock, open up my wide gate. The gate swung open and they entered. The doors closed behind them. Baba Yaga ordered Vasilisa to serve her supper and then gave her tasks for the next day. Sweep the yard, clean the hut, cook the dinner, wash the linen, and go to the co corn bin to sort out the bushels of wheat. And let everything be done or I will eat you up. And while Baba Yaga snored through the night, <laughs> Vasilisa took the Baba Yaga's leftover food and fed it to the doll. Help me. The doll answered, fear not. Vasilisa, go to sleep. The morning is wiser than the evening. When Vasilisa woke up, Baba Yaga had gone out, and almost all the work had been done by the little doll. Vasilisa completed the last of the cooking, and as the day waned, the horsemen in black rode past. The night descended, the skulls glowed, the leaves rustled, and in rode Baba Yaga in her mortar. She was annoyed that all the work had been done, but she cried, Very well, then. And then, My faithful servants, my dear friends, grind my wheat. And the three pairs of hands appeared and carried off the grain. Baba Yaga ordered the girl to do all the previous tasks on the following day, plus take the poppy seeds from the bin to get rid of the dust, grain by grain. Baba Yaga fell asleep, and, and the girl fed the doll the leftovers. And the doll did the work, and the next night, Baba Yaga sat down to eat with Vasilisa. And Vasilisa asked her, Who is the horseman dressed in white? He is my bright day. Who is the horseman dressed in red? He is my red sun. Who is the horseman dressed in black? He is my dark night and all of them are my faithful servants. Baba Yaga warned Vasilisa that one who knows too much will grow old soon. So she didn't ask about the magic hands who did her work. Baba Yaga then asked the girl something. How have you managed to do all the work I gave you? I am helped by the blessing of my mother. Ah, said Baba Yaga. Get you gone, blessed daughter. I, I want no blessed ones in my house. And she dragged Vasilisa out and pushed her past the gate and grabbed a skull from the fence and stuck it on a stick and gave it to her. Here is your light for your stepsisters. Vasilisa ran home. And when she reached home, she thought surely they would have light by now. She was about to put out the skull light when the skull talked to her. Do not throw me away. Take me to your stepmother. She did this. And the stepmother and the stepsisters, they were relieved to see her. They hadn't been able to strike a flame or make a fire at all since she left. But as Vasilisa brought the skull into the room, the eyes kept staring at the mother and at the sisters. The eyes started to burn them. And they ran away, but the skull, it followed them. And by the morning, 
they were all burned to ashes. Only Vasilisa remain untouched by the fire. The next day, Vasilisa buried the skull and moved away. She went into town and began to live with a childless old woman who cared for her. And Vasilisa wanted to repay the old woman for her kindness, so she began to spin flax for her. And the thread she spun was the finest that anyone had ever seen. No comb was fine enough to card it, so she fed the little doll. And the doll made her a special loom on which Vasilisa wove the most beautiful linen cloth. The old woman said that the cloth was fit only for royalty. And so she gave it to the czar, who then asked the old woman to cut it and sew it into shirts for him. It was not I that spun and wove this linen, your majesty, the old woman said. And, and the czar ordered Vasilisa to come to the palace. And Vasilisa said, I knew all the time that I would have to do this work. <laughs> and when the shirts were all made, the old woman, she took them to the czar. And Vasilisa, well, she washed herself. She combed her hair and she dressed. And she sat by the window just to see what happened. And sure enough, a messenger arrived and brought Vasilisa to the Tsar. And when he saw her beauty, he fell in love with her. You shall be my wife. And at once they held the wedding, and Vasilisa's father finally returned. And he and the old woman who had given Vasilisa shelter lived in the palace. And Vasilisa, well, she carried her doll in her pocket till the end of her life. When we compare these two stories about Baba Yaga and Vasilisa, we see that in some stories, Baba Yaga is a terrifying cannibal, but in others, she's a giver of gifts. This is part of her power in Russian folklore. She's ambiguous. She transforms. She defies classification. Most of the characters we've seen thus far are either good or bad, so you might be wondering how such an ambiguous character survived. Baba Yaga stories connect back to much older belief systems, Neolithic cultures in what is now the Middle East and, and Slavic countries, Romania, Hungary, Slovakia. They worshipped the mother goddess, who represented both life and death. If you look at nature, it's full of life and death, cycles of trees growing, dying, becoming renewed, just as our human bodies do from one generation to the next, parent to child. The mother goddess is a giver and destroyer of life, like a feminine Shiva in Hindu cultures. That's ambiguity. Over time, stories and rituals about the mother goddess became degraded, which means that they changed their form. They became less about spiritual worship and more filtered into the folk culture of everyday life. In the Greco-Roman era and in the Middle Ages, mother goddess pagan deities, they went underground because telling such stories about a female god was considered sacrilegious. Thus, Mother goddess stories transformed into the figure of the Baba Yaga. Now, this was about the same time in storytelling history that on another part of the globe, the story of Cupid and Psyche degraded into the story of East of the Sun, West of the Moon. Or was it the other way around? And as we'll soon hear in our future lectures over in England, it's when Jack started hanging out with King Arthur and killing all those giants. And so, the stories survived. Stories are a lot like humans. We and they have to adapt to our circumstances or we die. Next, we'll take a look at more adaptations of this classic and very rich story that is still here with us today. <laughs> 